We're speaking to Anita Ahmad, Chair of the United Nations Theme Group on Gender, on addressing the gender gap in the corporate and political arena. Up next, we'll be talking about how the lack of women representation in decision-making positions could impact Malaysia's economy and business competitiveness. BFM 89.9 the business station. We're speaking to Anita Ahmad, Chair of the United Nations Theme Group on Gender, on addressing the gender gap in the corporate and political arena. And coming back to the lack of women representation at the policy and decision-making level, how does a shortage of women representation at these levels affect Malaysia's economy and business competitiveness, in your opinion? I think it can go, you know, in in uh, many ways. For example, there's a lot of research that, so, I mean, this is mostly, I'll be talking a bit, a bit more about, say, the corporate sector first. So there's a body of research which shows that, you know, that demonstrates that, um, you know, if you appoint more uh, women, uh, female, uh, so women directors, it can actually improve a company's performance because, you know, they enhance the board independence. Better decision-making is assumed as well to occur as because directors have a range of experiences and backgrounds and you know, who can contribute to different ideas. Women tend to take their non-executive director roles as well more seriously, preparing more conscientiously for meetings. Women also tend to ask the awkward questions more often and, and decisions are less likely to be nodded through and are likely to be better. So, you know, this overall, you know, there's research that shows that you know, a company can perform better that way. And again, going back to assess, you know, what, what I talked about, uh, accessing talent pool, around the world, including Malaysia, women are becoming the new majority in high, you know, highly qualified talent pool. They are getting better educated. They are doing better, you know, in tertiary um, education, and these are trends that you no know, uh, Malaysia certainly cannot, you know, Malaysian businesses can't, can't ignore. They, if they don't take on women, they're not maximizing the talents of all these people, and therefore the company, you know, will be performing below par as well. And by tapping into underutilized pools of like female talent, especially at the board level, Malaysian companies, you know, will remain competitive and respond to rapidly changing expectations and market demands. And also, you find that the market is also changing. You know, women are increasing numbers in terms of population. In fact, in Malaysia, it's about you know, almost half the population of Malaysia. And also are uh, responsible for a lot of purchases you know, with the household. I mean, their, their purchasing power is getting stronger and stronger. So well, having women on boards who in many cases would represent the users and customers of, say, a company's products could improve understanding of customers' needs, leading to more informed decision-making. Studies have shown that when you have a gender balance you know, board, you have better corporate governance as well. You know, the more gender balanced boards are, the more likely you know, that you have better monitoring systems for implementation. They tend to, women tend to follow more conflicts of interest um, guidelines and adhere to code of conduct. And I'm saying this not of, not of biases as a woman as well. These are actual studies being you know, done um, in, in um, North America and in Europe as well, to, you know, showing that it does actually affect performance. Now, in terms of um, women in, in uh, politics, again, if you're talking about the population being almost 50% women, then you're reflecting also the representation of women in the country as well, through more women being in political positions. So we're not saying that all women will be definitely speaking on, you know, on substantive women's issues, but they are more likely um, within, uh, to be more sensitive to women's issues within uh, certain policies. So there are a lot of policies like in our country which you know people say uh, should be or are neutral blind, but it can't be. Everything has a woman's perspective. So even like for example, even if traditionally you think that I have an example of somebody was like saying that no, we don't have to look at the woman's role in uh, say agriculture because they are they are helping their husband. And I'm like no, they're not just helping their husband. They're actually a resource there and they are contributing through unpaid labour, and that's not right. So it's not to say that they're not working women. So whether or not a man can see that is another thing, but you know, providing more women in, in policy making as well will, will shed more light in terms of women's needs and addressing not only women's needs, but also children's needs. So it's quite important. What are some of the challenges that you think that Malaysia will face in implementing this 30% quota system? Perhaps from your experience of seeing how this quota system has been implemented in countries like Norway or France or Spain? I think the main thing is that, like I said, it needs to be in tandem with other policies as well. Again, I go back to the point that I raised about you know, establishing additional childcare centres, you know, making sure that uh, she's able to re retain her career, uh, retain her position in the workforce for a longer period, being able to build up her career so that she gains the experience to fulfil her role in the boardroom. But, I mean, that's something that's long-term. But, you know, it's, it's also, again, you know, not 
switching off your mind saying that you know women are not capable of doing this that that mindset has got to change so that mindset has of course been forced to change through this this quota so uh, you know i think you will see some some changes in terms of seeing that okay yeah now you know i, I now have to recognize this woman that she is quite capable and she's she's able to to you know be a board member but if for example i mean that can be done on the one part with the current talent pool but if for example other things like better code of conduct where sexual harassment is concerned is not in place because we are, we are seeking for sexual harassment law if that continues and women still feel uncomfortable in in the workplace especially you know in in high positions or if they are not able to get better support in terms of child care if there's not a better understanding and implementation of work life balance uh, policies which you know is work life balance policies are being uh, practiced more and more in in other countries without affecting the productivity without all this in place then you will find that you know you're not going to get the best of the women that you could have had uh, to fill fulfill not only the 30% gender uh, gender quota but beyond that i mean 30% is only a cap we are looking at far more if it's done properly with all these conducive environments one we don't even have to have the quota and secondly you will see more women there but you no know, if you don't have all these other supporting sort of programs or uh, you know policies or, or actions then you know it will mean quite a big challenge we were speaking to anita ahmad chair of the united nations theme group on gender on addressing the gender gap in the corporate and political arena thanks for speaking to us today anita yeah you're welcome thanks very much for inviting me I'm Kathleen Tan for Current Affairs and you're listening to BFM 89.9, The Business Station. BFM 89.9, The Business Station.